Game time live begins. Catching up on action around the association. Celtics, Hayward, easy. The Wolves, uh, they were tame. But they didn't cut the lead within 10. And then some. The Cat, nice little step back fadeaway. Help close the third, get it down to six. Keep posted on that. Tightening in Boston. Meanwhile, Sixers, nice extra look. And Embiid, eh. when it's that easy, why take the three ever? 18-point lead. Keep you posted there. That's Russell Westbrook. Is that uh, the Smitty? Hey, man, he got, he got on mitten. Wow, look at these pants. <laughs> what in the way? He got on some tights. How about some pants, Paul George? Okay, <laughs> downward dog. Man. man. What? It's changing, right baby. Hey, hey, it, hey, with hey. the time. Dude, it looks hey, like he had, like, hey. 40, like, emojis on his I'm glad pants. I played when I played. Yeah, well, I'll yeah, take I mean, the bag of soup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you would just hold You would look clean regardless. Now imagine hey, Grant Hill in that. Is that denim? What do we got there? Man, I don't care what he got mittens. I can I, I can deal with that right there. No, no, wait, hold on. Russell, leave, I could go with this that. right here for I a don't second. Mind. I, if I you could, can. Uh, worst case scenario, I could go with Hold on, leave this here to our fearless the, leader. What you got the David Fisher. For? Is he wearing my pants? Why can't guys wear pants that are long enough? It might be raining. Well, it might game? be raining. This game it might be raining. Though, no, but KC. seriously, what's the? De- is that like a look? What look is that? I don't know what that is. Look at that. Okay, PG. And I'm telling you right now, it looks like he's playing Pac-Man on his pants. They in yeah. L.A. Why does he have? Mittens? It never rains in L.A., right? Why does he have mittens? Russell Westbrook had mittens. Yeah, I don't know why. Go back to Westbrook. Let's see. Can we go back to Westbrook. <laughs> Dude, what? No, seriously though, is that a look? Is that the yeah, thing? Yeah, it's look. The, the, it is. Short pants. Like you got kids who are cool. Yeah, like, they, the they do that. But the mittens. My kids aren't that cool. My kids are four and three. They're just like lucky if they're wearing pants. Man, your kids, they gonna have. Wow. Man, your kids get old enough. What, 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 what they might be wearing? That's now. what. That's what they're looking. Be up like, for. who's my father? <laughs> um, <laughs> welcome inside our studios here in Atlanta. It is another uh, Wednesday night edition of Game Icy. Time. The usual crew. G Hill, H O F down on the end. Smitty. My hero, because he tolerates <laughs> me more than anybody else here. You're my guy, Casey. Yeah, literally, I don't know. You must have gotten the real short end of the stick. Um, we talk about, obviously, the Lakers during the course of the year and now the situation kind of being without LeBron. And the interesting thing is, is they play a team in the Thunder that a lot of us think could be potentially a dangerous team come postseason time. The expectations weren't supposed to be there for this year. It wasn't supposed to matter. It would maybe be good he misses games. Maybe you lose, get a pick. All of a sudden, things changed, though, when we realized the West was a little topsy-turvy and the Lakers weren't so bad, right? You know, and the Lakers was looking at home court advantage. Mm-hmm. You know, I know it was early, and, and everybody was saying they have a chance. They have a chance that's just as good as anybody else. The Houston Rockets wasn't playing well. We know the Golden State Warriors will get it together, but they haven't played well. And the OKC Thunder has been a team for me, but I think the pressure now is for the Lakers organization. Do you go try to win, or do you settle and say next year? And I think it all comes down to if they can make a deal during the trade deadline um, this February. Yeah, let's be honest. The GOAT there, uh, LeBron, uh, whether or not he's going to be okay with that too, right? I mean, they're not going to sit there and go the other way without him, let's be honest. Uh, So when you look at the Lakers, where are they better off? Are they better off? Hey, let's kind of hold tight till LeBron's come back. Maybe we'll kind of tweak a little bit. And later in game time tonight, we'll talk about some of the deadline pickups possibly. Or should they go the other way and maybe stock another opportunity to build for the future instead of now? You know, you, when you have a LeBron James at this point in his career, I, I, I think you go for it. I think you have to take advantage, as Smitty said, right now, uh, there's no one sort of separating from the pack. They're still in the mix, although, you know, obviously going to struggle with LeBron out or potentially struggle with him out. But he only has a, you know, it's not 25-year-old LeBron James. He's had a lot of miles on his body. He's played a lot of basketball. He's shown already in a short period of time, in two months, what he's capable of doing with this young team. He's far exceeded, and they have far exceeded everyone's expectations. So if you can add a piece here or possibly do something uh, to get better but, you know, between now and the trade deadline, and, and knowing Magic Johnson, who wants to win and doesn't have a lot of patience, you know, I could see that happening for the Lakers. Like, hey, let's not wait till next year. Let's go for it right now. Yeah, I think when you look at LeBron and where he sits, uh, why we're surprised what he can do, and I'm not, I'm not trying to – I don't want to mention anybody specifically because we're not trying to demean other players. Like, how do you get these guys here? But, look, he's one-man banded before. I mean, remember the team he had with all the injuries and they lose Kyrie. The other side with Oklahoma City, though, I think we got to get into, and not just the, the pants, and they were interesting pants. <laughs> like, 
some real pants. Um, <laughs> Smitty, you wouldn't wear those. 3D's wearing them somewhere. He's got 3D in the back of the tag. <laughs> Players only. Yeah. The Players back. only. 3D TV. 3D's kids are going to go to camp and be like, why doesn't it say my name in my Andy's? It says 3D lifestyle, bro. Anyway, I got jokes. So, the Thunder. Last year, Chris Paul's injury clearly, but we know the Rockets pushed them because why? They added defense. This team gets stops. They got toughness. They got scores. How dangerous are they? They're very dangerous. And I say this uh, when we were in the preview, I mean, in the preseason. The reason why I liked them was, one, you have a Paul George who stayed, and obviously that tells you a lot. He didn't go. We all thought he was going to Los Angeles, but he wanted to stay here. So he believed in what the Thunder was doing. He believed in playing with Russell Westbrook and his coaching staff. Mm -hmm. That's one when you have a superstar player like Paul George. Then you have a Steven Adams that's getting better. Then for me was the pickup of Dennis Schroeder. It takes Russell Westbrook off the ball, or when he subs, you have a guy that can, can keep the pace. And then it also added a defensive guy in Schroeder. So when you put out Paul George, Russell Westbrook, also Schroeder, and Steven Adams, you have four legitimate defenders. And then also they can score. And he hasn't played well, and they're still winning games. I, I like the Thunder. And it seems like also, and we've talked about this before, Grant, we know Russell still wants to take over at the end of the game. There have been times Paul George, let's be fair, has scored 40, and then Russell's taking the last shot anyway. But are you seeing him transition with PG in a different way he ever did, including when KD played with him in terms of as a teammate with another big scorer? Well, well a couple of things. One, I think, I think just, you know, Paul George committing. And now, okay, he's going to be here. There's not this uncertainty that was hanging over their head last year. Uh, I, I think that plays a role. And I think, yeah, I mean, look, a year ago we were talking, can Russell Westbrook win a basketball? Can right. he win at the way he plays? And, and what that means is that he did so much for his team that is he going to allow others to, to, to enjoy and, and share in the responsibility? And it seems like he has done that in allowing Paul George to really get back to that level Paul George pre-injury back in his Indiana days. And so now, and Dennis Schroeder coming in, all those things that Smitty touched on, yeah, I mean, you know, less is more. And I, it's almost like he's comfortable, I think, now with who he is, Russell Westbrook. I think there was something to prove after, after Durant left. He's done that. I think now it's about trying to win and having a guy like Paul George and the, and the complimentary players uh, who bring that toughness, that defense, and now scoring and, and, and just understanding what it takes to win. This team, is, this team is scary. You know, and they've got guys who could steal a game on their own, which you want if you're trying to beat a better team. You need that. NHL, a goalie, a pitcher, a quarterback. It's that way, look, you're not going to match up with talent. You can't. I want to ask you, because we're going to talk Smitty later in the show about some of the bigger names, mm -hmm. but you and I last year remember working together often during that deadline stretch and those Sixers moves. I still think about our conversations on and off the air, mm -hmm. right, about Bellinelli. They stand out. A shooter, right? A, yes. Another shooter here, like a Bellinelli, to somebody who can add to that mix where if late in the game you need a shot and these guys are converged on, you can – find somebody to get a bucket, right? And, and they've been looking for a shooter. You know, obviously, when you have talented guys like Russell Westbrook, the more space you give him and the more guys that can knock down shots, and they need that. And that, that's the one thing they're missing. And also themselves, Russell is shooting atrocious from the three-point line right now. And also, I, I'm baffled the way he's shooting from the free throw line as well. He, they are struggling with making shots at time. They're struggling at the three-point line. But when you look at the leaderboard, they're still there. Reason why is they can defend mm. and they can win ugly. And a lot of times they they say all the time, "Can you win games when you're not at your best?" And their defense have traveled, and they also missing Roberson. So they still have some guys. And I like the little sneak pickup of Noel. Nerlens Noel has done a nice job in spot minutes behind Stephen Adams. So I think they're a deep team. We're gonna nick pick. They can get a shooter. I think they have a chance. Let me throw this one at you. You can answer this question at NBA TV maybe and kind of jump in on this, but. Let's take the two teams tonight. Let's put LeBron back soon, okay? Mm -hmm. Better chance that which of these teams play Golden State in the conference final as of today when you look at the end of the year? Because these are two of the choices, correct? Right. Right? Yeah. What, what Houston? Right. Right? I, I, I would go with, with Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. And, and the reason I say that, I just think they've, they have more guys who've been playoff tested. You know, Shooter, who has been in the playoffs, has been a starting point guard, I don't think would be afraid of the moment. Um, you know, I think, I think obviously Adams, Russell Westbrook, Paul George. Um, you know, I, I, I think they would be more inclined and probably to do a better job against the Golden State Warriors. We know LeBron is capable of carrying a team. But these guys that he's playing with, 
if they don't make a roster change, you know, the playoffs is a whole different experience. Mm -hmm. And they're still young. And this team was a, a lottery team before LeBron James came on board this past summer. So I, I'm more inclined to lean towards Oklahoma City right now. But, of course, that can change between now and the start of the playoffs. Smitty? Right, today, I'm with G. I got the Thunder. If you're talking about today to where these teams are both constructed, I have to go with the Thunder. They've been there. They've done that. They have more two-way players and more experience to me. And I, and I look at it, and there's no knock on the Lakers. I think the Lakers' future obviously looks better than the Thunder with LeBron. I mean, the Lakers didn't, with LeBron James. But a Paul George, a Russell Westbrook, a Schroeder, a Steven Adams, you're naming guys that's been in the fire and experience. And I like with some of their young guys, the way they're playing. I like Grant, the way he's playing. It, they just need some shooting. If they can get that, or Russell can start to knock down some shots. Second chance points, rebounds, mm -hmm. a lot of those things, right? Fast I noticed break. you mentioned Denver, so I want to get in there with that. Now, I also untested. Look, they didn't have Millsap most of last year. You know, Jokic is still developing. We saw a couple nights ago he takes five shots. He'll sometimes kind of head in the background. But they've played like a team who should be in that conversation. Are you still power ranking maybe them behind the other three in some order, Lakers, Thunder, Rockets, in terms of who's that second best team in that conference? Yeah, yeah. and I look at them as the experience. And then I think also for them is they, they just haven't <clears throat> got a chance to play together. Millsap was out last year. It seems like they're starting to get going, and he's out. And then Gary Harris has been out. Will Barton has been out. They're, everything for me is health, and I don't know when all these guys will get healthy. We still haven't mentioned Isaiah Thomas with the Denver Nuggets. When will Who? he come back? How do you implement him with this? And so I think it will be more chemistry with them, but I like what they've done. No, I, I love the way they play and, and their offense, their unselfishness. Uh, you know, they have a great spirit about them that's fun to watch. But, you know, getting into the postseason, I, I, I'm just not ready yet. I, I still – I'm not 100% sold that they are that, that team to you know, really contest and, and, and go after Golden State uh, in the postseason. Uh, you know, Millsap being healthy and all, you know, obviously will play a big role, but I don't know if he's that kind of player now that can really lift the team. Uh, it's experience, and they don't have that kind of playoff experience. And, and so conventional wisdom would say that, you know, they, as great as they've been, I think they'll continue to be great in the regular season. It's, it's a whole new ball game in the postseason. And so I, I just don't know if I'm ready to sort of give them, uh, you know, that, the nod over a team like OKC. Now, remember just for a sec how early we are in a season. Utah comes together, team that plays defense, team that mm -hmm. learned last year. Portland still could have big games with the guards. And look, remember last year, the Wolves, right? They mm -hmm. just at the last second beating out Denver to get in. And that's uh, we call that a segue here.